I'm at the airport, I'm ready to fly. We're gonna do it all over again. United Polaris, but this time, it's one of their flagship routes, flying from New York, well, it's actually Jersey, Newark, through to London Heathrow. Uh, unique thing about this one, it's in a 767. It's been years and years since I've flown a 767. You don't see them at all in Australia. So uh, join me, let's go and see what uh, Polaris is like on this little hop across the pond. Once I dropped off my bag, it was straight through security and up to United Airlines flagship Polaris Lounge. This lounge is huge, but it's still not big enough judging by how busy it was on this day. For the Av Geeks, the lounge has some pretty good views across the airport. There's also a large bar and even an a la carte restaurant. In fact, there were lots of really good food options on offer, and what struck me is how many people were eating. I should have realised why, but it didn't click. Also, I wasn't hungry, so instead spent my time working on one of my videos. After a couple of hours, it was time to board, and I headed to my gate. On the way, I noticed how great the departure gates are here at Newark, with lots of desks and tables with PowerPoints for those who need to get some work done. It always amazes me just how much info is provided on the gate screens at American airports and how strict they are with the boarding groups. Today's flight would be on a 30-year-old 767, the oldest aircraft I've flown in quite some time. Welcome board, United Polaris to uh, Heathrow. Cheers and here's to one sensational flight. Today's flight, UA110 from Newark to Heathrow, would be only 6 hours and 18 minutes from takeoff to landing. This is one of seven daily flights United has from Newark to Heathrow. Now that we're up in the air, let's have a good look at this United Polaris business class cabin and seat. Because the 767 is relatively narrow, the seating is laid out in a 1-1-1 configuration. This means that couples need to sit across the aisle from each other or one behind the other. Each seat is offset from the one in front to maximise space. My choice of seat are those closer to the window, as these are more private. These are really good business class seats, with a couple of features in particular that I really like. The first of this is the very easy to use dial to move your seat forwards and backwards. It's great at meal time or when you're working. The second feature I really like is a fully adjustable headrest that even moves forward. The rest of the seat features have been really well designed with practicality in mind. The plugs are right where you want them and there's a good amount of both space and storage. The tray table is large and sturdy, which makes it great for working on your laptop. I'll show you the seat in bed mode a little later in the flight. The post-departure drink was delayed by turbulence, but when it finally happened, my gin and tonic hit the spot. Following this was dinner. Orders had been taken before we took off, and I noticed quite a few people around me telling the crew they would be skipping dinner. I had assumed that this was because they wanted to maximise sleep. However, I soon realised that they were probably frequent flyers and knew that United's food offering on this route is pretty disappointing. This also explains why so many people were eating in the lounge. The chicken curry salad appetizer was an interesting combination of flavours. Not offensive, but interesting. The rest of the meal was plain dull. I went with the Mediterranean grilled chicken. This dish lacked any flavour. And the salad? Well, this tasted as tired as it looked. For dessert, I went with the ice cream sundae, which American carriers like to hype up. This one was just an overly sweet mess. Considering how good the food had been on my Polaris flight from Sydney to LA, this was really disappointing, 
and it really kills the notion that airlines offer their best on their flagship routes. At this stage, it was time to go to sleep and dream about Malaysia Airlines Sartes. Before I show you the seat and bed mode, here's a quick look at the United Amenities Kit. It comes in a bum bag, as we Australians call them. This will be handy if I ever find myself going to a music festival. It was well stocked with various lotions and potions and other goodies to make the flight more comfortable. One area where United does shine is with its abundance of bedding. A day blanket, an oversized quilt, a mattress topper and two pillows, including a cool gel pillow, help to make this a really comfy bed. Sadly, there were no PJs on this short hop across the pond. The leg and foot room on this bed were pretty good too, and I slept solidly for a couple of hours. Despite what the menu said, there was no second meal service on this short flight, so when I awoke, I had a cup of tea and checked out the United Entertainment System. It seemed pretty good, with lots of choices. Wi-Fi was also available, but at 28 US dollars for a less than seven hour flight, I thought it was way too expensive and I didn't connect. It wasn't long before we started our descent into London. Whilst it was a novelty to fly a 767 again, it did remind me that I have far more issues with my ears hurting on these older aircraft compared to the modern A350s and 787s. Sadly, it was too early and dark for any great views as we landed, but do stick around because the very best feature of this flight is actually when you're on the ground in London. As you come out of the international arrivals, you'll find the United Airlines Arrivals Lounge right there on your left. It's available to all Polaris passengers and is absolutely brilliant. My first priority was a shower and these were great. And whilst you're showering, they'll even iron your shirt. That feels a whole lot better. Now, time for a coffee. The lounge is perfect for early morning arrivals when you just know that your hotel room won't be ready. Here, you can freshen up, have some breakfast and relax or get some work done before heading into town. I wish all airlines did this. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Also, please don't forget to check out my channel where you'll find lots of other flight reviews and some great behind the scenes videos. Thanks again for watching and as always, happy travels.